Hi, this is Mike Crow, and I run a home inspection business. In fact, I've run a couple of home inspection businesses. Your true joy for me, though, has been helping literally thousands of home inspectors build really solid home inspection businesses as well. We can help a single man operation be able to do over $300,000 a year, maybe all the way up to $400,000 a year as a single inspector operation. Even better for me is the 80 plus companies that we have helped be able to build million dollar home inspection businesses. I would like to help you be able to do the same thing. This week, we're sharing an episode of the Inspector Toolbelt Talk podcast. Mike was on as a guest recently, and there was a lot of valuable information shared. So let's get into it. This is Inspector Toolbelt Talk. Well, welcome back, everyone, to Inspector Toolbelt Talk. Today, I have on a, a guest that I've been really looking forward to having. We have Mike Crow himself. Mike, how are you? I am doing amazing, my friend. I am spending a day at Disney. What can you say? <laughs> okay, but so the Florida Disney, right? Absolutely. Disney World. Yep. So which park are you going to? Or are you going to all of them? We go to all of them, usually plus Universal as well. I'm here with a good friend of mine and his family and some friends. And so we're just having a kind of a mastermind and having some fun. Awesome. Well, I've been really excited about having you on the show, and I'm really appreciative that you took time out of your busy schedule because, well, maybe I'll let you tell the audience about yourself. What do you do and why should really all of us know who you are? Well, <laughs> you know, I'm, a, I'm an overnight success. What can I tell you? It only took 38 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I started back in the business in 85, grew a uh, home inspection business. I was the first company to sell a home inspection business for over a million dollars. Then I oh, helped wow. that national firm grow several million dollar areas. They did some good stuff. And then I realized that it wasn't really a good fit for me with them as much as anything else, but I had a non-compete. So I, uh, I backed off, I resigned and I started coaching home inspectors as long as they weren't within 50 miles of the original, you know, home inspection company that I sold, I was good. And during the coaching program, people said, Mike, I, I don't know if you realize this, but you're in year 2000 now. And that was 80 something when you built your business. So what you're teaching doesn't really work today. And it kind of ticked me off a little bit. So I went and mm -hmm. bought another company and uh, made a guy an offer he just couldn't refuse, one of my old competitors. And we took his business. He used to be a million dollar company, but he was just sliding backwards so bad. He was at about 300,000. So we took that company from 300,000 to 600,000 to a million to 1.4 million and then to 2 million. And we've been doing over 2 million for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so. We did 2.7 million last year. And so it's been an exciting journey. Oh, fantastic. So obviously your methods do work. <laughs> yeah, they, they do work and they consistently work. And it, it's about creating the right lifestyle with that process. So not only does it work, but I only work about four hours a week in my inspection business. Oh, wow. Okay. I'd love to hear how you manage doing that. That's fantastic. We can definitely talk about that some. And in my original business that I sold, one of the reasons they liked it so much, and one of the reasons they were willing to pay so much for it was that I didn't have to be there either. And if you don't have to be there every single day, your business is worth a lot more because now right. they're not buying you, they're buying your systems and everything that you bring into play. Uh, that's a fantastic point. That's the dream of a lot of home inspectors. And a lot of us tend to say, well, I have to work really hard and a lot. I have to put in a hundred hours a week to get to that point. And your method obviously works quite a bit differently than that. So that's fantastic. Well, and they do. And, and I will tell you, one of the things that I tell people is if you're willing to do now what other people are not willing to do, you'll get to spend the rest of your life like people dream they could, you know, could live. Yeah. Well, th this is a fantastic episode then to have on in the series that we've been doing. We've been talking a lot about marketing and the changing market of what's happening. And you said something interesting before we started the podcast. You said a lot of inspectors don't know the difference between a good market and a bad market. Yeah, isn't that amazing? But the, yeah, but the interesting though, the title of this podcast is Market Through It. Right. And that, that was your idea. So maybe you could talk to that point a little bit. First of all, I'd, I'd like to hear what you think is a good market versus a bad market and help educate us on that. But then also I'd like to hear why you came up with that title of Market Through It. All right. And uh, we'll definitely hit the market through it here in just a second. Um, here's the thing is, I've been at this for 38 years, since 1985. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
How many recessions do you think I've seen? How many presidential elections do you think I've seen? How many pandemics have you, <laughs> you know? How many surges in the market where people are crying, oh, you know, it's a, it's a seller's market and sellers don't want inspections. You know, I've been through all of that. And in fact, I've been through probably three recessions, all right? I came into this in the 80s and I, you're probably too young to remember the 80s the way I do at least, you know, but there were long gasoline lines and interest rates were 18%. I mean, that's what I came mm -hmm. into in the business, okay? And one of the most famous presidents ever. I didn't say best, I just said most famous, okay? But, you know, it was, it was an interesting thing. And one of the things that uh, I have to give my dad a lot of credit because he always said, well, you know, we just have to market ourselves, And I, I do have a marketing degree, by the way. And by the way, so does my son, so does my daughter. And, <laughs> you know, oh, wow. but the, the bottom line is that you have to learn how to make the phone ring. You have to learn how to make people want to use you. And then biggest secret. And by the way, this is where a lot of inspectors will probably turn us off today. So I apologize up front, but you have to learn how to get people to refer you over and over and over again. Okay. So a lot of inspectors, they want to go out and get a job. They want to go get an inspection. No, 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 no. I mean, I do that. I do that. And we do it kind of well, but I want to go get somebody that's going to refer me five times a year. I want to get somebody that's going to mm -hmm. refer me every year they're in business. Okay. I want to get somebody that's going to refer me to every job, every home they sell maybe, or that every home sell they're part of that they'll refer me. I call those people mavens, by the way. So what I teach is maven-driven marketing. And the whole idea is to find somebody that is already working with home buyers. And there are about 15 of those people. And I don't think most people realize that. But you've got, of course, you've got the low-hanging fruit, which most people don't even use as much as they should. But you've got the, you've got the real estate agents and there's the buyer's agent, and then there's the seller's agent. You've got mortgage mm -hmm. companies, you've got title companies, you've got real estate attorneys, you've got moving companies, you've got insurance companies, and the list just goes on and on. Who new homeowners or home buyers are working with? And what you want to do is get those people to know who you are and get those people to refer you just over and over again. And so when I tell people to market through it, they think, hey, let's go get more home buyers. No, let's get more people that can refer us. In fact, I created a, a KPI or a key, wow, KPI, key performance indicator. Excuse me. You know, some days I, I have forgotten more than I know. What can I tell you? Okay. You've, you've probably forgotten more than I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a key performance indicator that your business is on track, that your business is doing the right thing. When I came into the industry, the key performance indicators were how much business did we do this month? What a terrible, terrible key performance indicator. That is like looking yeah. in the rear view mirror right? And seeing what you did. I like looking out the windshield and seeing where I'm going. So one of the key performance indicators that I created was how many new mavens used us this month or this week. So hmm. this year alone, we have 500 plus new mavens that have used our home inspection business. By the way, most home inspection companies, well, single man operations won't even do 500 inspections. And Every yeah. one of those have used us at least once and probably 60% of them have used us a second, third, fourth, fifth time. Okay. That's, that's the big thing. You know, the funny thing is I, I actually teach, you know, when a recession hits or, or I also call it winter marketing. Most of my competition will like go, okay, we need to turn the volume down on the marketing because there isn't as much business. It's exactly the opposite, right? We have to turn the volume up. So during winter time, if we're visiting 20 real estate offices, we need to turn that into 30 or 40 real estate offices. If we're doing a presentation once a week, we need to do two presentations a week. Now, I'm going to be very honest. Those are low numbers, okay, for me. But for the average guy listening to this, he might go, okay, I could do that. And you have to market your way through that. During a normal business, if you're already up and running and you're doing okay, then visiting 10 real estate offices a week per inspector is perfectly fine. So you got the recessions out there where the business is falling through the floor and everybody's going, oh, nobody's buying houses. By the way, when we had more foreclosures than we could shake a stick at, I was doing 100 to 200 foreclosure inspections a month. OK, because yeah. I was working for banks and different things like that. And then during this last big gruha, you know, where people were going, oh, it's a seller's market. And and agents are saying, well, if you put an inspection in there, then I'm not going to I'm not even going to look at that offer. 
we had our best year ever, our best year ever. And now we're headed into another recession. But in between that boom and that recession that we all think is coming, okay, and uh, this is actually a normal market. Mm -hmm. And that, I don't think that's what people understand. This right now, okay, is a normal market. But the problem is people have gotten so used to it being a boomer market or being a recession market that they're kind of concerned. They think this is a down market. It's not. This is normal. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. We did our Q4 Market Outlook podcast a couple of weeks ago, and we said that. We're like, you know, okay, so interest rates are, what are they, 7% or something like that or whatever. Oh, yeah, whatever they are Whatever now. they are now. And I'm like, yeah, but like 15 years ago, people were bragging about 11% interest rate. They're like, hey, look how, look how well it Yeah, is. because it was just coming down, right? Yeah, so it's like, uh, okay, it's, it's, I don't think it's as bad as people say. We are transitioning. The transition period is a little bit difficult. But to something you said earlier, I got to roll back to it and say, preach it, because that was – spot on. People turn down their marketing when things get hard and they turn it up when things get easy. That's like only watering your lawn in the rain. And then when it gets dry, you turn the hose off. It does not make any sense. That's when you pound Doesn't the make pavement. Any sense. Yeah. People who in this market market more will end up coming out the other end with less competition and a better business. Right. Now I will tell you, I say something every time I hear somebody say something like that. And it goes something like this. I love my competition. <laughs> you know, oh, you don't want to market right now? You know, I completely understand that. I, If I were you, I wouldn't either. <laughs> you know? uh, thank God I'm not them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it it is kind of a funny mentality. Oh, well, things are going to get lean. I have to save money. You're going to lose that money by trying to save it. Like, yeah. how much does it cost to go visit a real estate office, as you mentioned? To, to catch it, It'll cost you you know, about $10 every visit. If you do it right, it'll cost you at least $10 to $20 for every office visit. So if you're visiting 10 offices a week, it's going to cost you $100 to $200 a week. Okay. So let's and most people go, oh my God, that's, that's way too much. You know, I had this inspector one time who wanted to, who's like, oh, I didn't want to spend $500 to do a real estate presentation in front of, you know, 200 real estate agents. And I'm like, yeah, why, why wouldn't you? <laughs> I, I'd do it all day long and then go buy them, you know, happy hour afterwards. What, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's lost money. But I, I want to hear, I want to hear how this looks on on paper, so to speak. So say I am running a home inspection company, you know, during the boom, I did a single inspector and I did two to 300, let's say, just for instance. Now I notice my numbers going down. Yep. What, what do I do today as just made up? I'm going to be Joe, the home inspector. What should Joe, the home inspector, do to plow through this winter market, as you called it? So here's here's a big secret. And again, I know I, I, sometimes people go, man, you must, how old are you? <laughs> you know? But I've been at this for 38 years, right? There are a couple of people out there that are going, well, you know, you don't do this or, well, the market has changed this way or the market has changed that way. What What's one of the biggest lies that is being told to home inspectors right now? Oh, the real estate agents aren't in the offices anymore. I hear okay? that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guess what? I used to walk in and out of office in the 80s and the 90s. And guess what? There were no agents in the office then either. Okay. They don't make money sitting in the office. Mm -hmm. Okay. They come by the office, they pick stuff up and, and they do more agents work from home now. Yeah, probably. But guess what? They still come to the office, you know, once a week, once a month, pick stuff up, see what the news is, talk to people there. And so, but it's one of the biggest lies and, and I get it and I, I appreciate it. And, and of course I go, man, I love my competition, you know, mm -hmm. when I hear crazy stuff like that, you know, so the office visits are still the number one way to position yourself so that you can grow your business. Now, when I, I teach people what I call big bang marketing. So we take in a, a, a glass bowl with chocolates and it's an eight week program. And for every week, for eight weeks, you need to go in, you need to say hi to them. By the third week, they're going, oh, wow, you really are coming back every week, right? I mean, the average inspector does what? He visits them once a month, maybe. All right. I find a lot of guys visit it once and then they're like, well, that didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. You know, that, uh, that's like filling your car up with gas once and it, well, it worked for a little while, but it doesn't work now. You <laughs> yeah, know? Exactly. 
Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. So, yeah, visiting once a week. And uh, so they get to know you. They get to like you. They get to trust you. And, and they start referring you. And then you build on it from there. And the Big Bang Marketing really is designed so that you're you're getting to know them, like them, and they get to trust you. And then you ask to do a live presentation at one of their office meetings. And people go, well, they don't have office meetings anymore. Well, there, there you go. There's another lie in the industry. Mm -hmm. The good offices, they have they have office meetings sometimes every single week. Even the slower offices, uh, they have it like once a month. Uh, and by the way, some offices never had office meetings, never had office meetings. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you set it up so that they want to have an office meeting when you come in and do the right thing. Hey, I'll bring breakfast in. And I have this little presentation on nine marketing secrets, you know, of top producing agents. And they're going, huh, when do we put that on the calendar? You know, every broker wants their agents to hear that sort of stuff. So that's kind of a cool thing. You're like my new favorite person. You're speaking my language, man. <laughs> we did a podcast just a few weeks ago on how to properly visit a real estate office. Oh, but that was a good one. I, I'd love to hear... I, I, I loved it because it's always been very effective for me because this is a, a people business. You can go directly to buyers, like you said, and just go after the work or you can go after the work generator. Right. So tell me what you say when you first walk into a real estate office. What do you what are you wearing? What are you carrying? What are you saying? <laughs> All right. So two things. If I'm a home inspector, I'm wearing my uniform. And, and there we go. We probably lost another 20% of eight, uh, inspectors going, I'm not going to wear a uniform. No, no, no. Right on. We preach that on this show. <laughs> you know, because the big thing about uniforms, of course, is that when you get a second guy, you want to dress him just like you. So everybody goes, oh, OK, it's another, you know, Ian, it's another Mike. It's another George. It's an whatever. OK. And so that's kind of a cool thing. But uh, if I'm walking into an office the very first time, I usually have my uniform on. Now, if I'm marketing and that's what I'm doing all day, I wear a tie, you know, or I wear a jacket, but no tie. Hmm. But I, I spiff it up just a little bit, depending on what neighborhood I'm in and what I'm doing. But for the most part, I just wear my my blue Oxford cloth shirt, you know, buttoned down with our name engraved on it and everything. And I walk in and I say one simple thing. This is the sentence that, that started the whole Big Bang marketing. Hi, I, a glass bowl in hand, miniature Hershey bars in the other hand. Hi, I'd like to see if I could set up a chocolate bowl for your office. Yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Where would you like me to put it? And 50% of the time they go right here, okay? And the other 50% of the time they go, oh, well, you can put it anywhere. Put it in the kitchen, put it uh, next to the mailboxes, put it in the, one of the conference rooms. My favorite spot, by the way, is next to the mailboxes, okay? Hmm. Now, if they have a place where they have all the brochures, that's a good spot too. But I could put brochures there and I could put chocolates over here. And now I've got two spots in the office, Okay. It's like having different flavors of Oreos. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I get more shelf space, you know? So those, that's the, that's the start of it. And then I ask some questions. So, wow. How long has your office been here? Like, I don't know anything, right? Oh gosh, we've been here 28 years. Wow. That must make you guys one of the most prominent real estate offices in the area. So I compliment them. Okay. Uh, how many ages do you have in the office? Oh, we have 35. That's impressive. I, I don't know a lot of offices that have 35 plus agents. Maybe that's true or not true. Okay. And so do you guys get together on a regular basis for educational training? Now I'm asking something I want to know so that I can, you know, plan. And, and, and a lot of times that's my first visit. Well, I'll tell you what, please don't, please don't let the candy bowl go away. I know it's going to get empty, but don't let it go away. I'm going to come in every week and fill this up for you just so we can kind of get to know each other. You know, we're expanding the, the, the marketplace and everything. We've been in business for, you know, since 85 and I'll see you again next week. And I leave. And the next week I come in, there's no candy bowl. There's no brochures. There's no nothing. And they go, oh, you meant it when you said you were coming back. Yep. And and they, they start hunting the whole office for the candy bowl. And I go, hey, don't worry about it. I got another candy bowl out here and I get another glass bowl. I put them in. By the way, the glass bowls cost me a buck at Family Dollar and, and, and places like that. So I put another glass bowl in. Nice. I put more chocolates in it. I put more brochures in it. I put more business cards in it and everything. I said, now don't let that candy bowl go away. I'm going to be back next week. You know, and I ask a couple more questions. And the third week I come in, they go, you really did mean you were coming back. And they reach under and they pull the candy bowl out and they go, here's your candy bowl. <laughs> you know, and by the way, here's a little secret. 
Put something in it besides just candy so it won't walk off as easily, okay? So like pens, writing pens, emery boards, agents love emery boards and something. And so it uh, we find that the bowls don't disappear quite as quickly when there's other stuff like that in it besides just the brochures and the business cards. And then the fourth week we come in and they go, Mike, so nice to see you again. And the bowl's sitting there, mm -hmm. okay? And I fill it up and now I start asking, you know, a little bit more about their meetings. I ask them a little bit more about who's in charge of the meetings. By now, I have a three ring binder that has a list of all my educational presentations in them. I have about 20 of them. And I go, you know, who's in charge of the presentations and who schedules those? Oh, so and so. You know, I'm just curious if they'd be willing to take a look at this list and see if there's any of these educational presentations that they would find useful. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. Henry's in his office right now. And they call Henry up and I, I explained, oh, you're the guy that's been bringing the chocolates in. I've already made points and he doesn't even know who I am. Yeah. And I said, we have these educational presentations, uh, you know, 10 ways to get 10 more referrals per month, guaranteed. Um, nine marketing secrets of top producing agents, uh, Facebook Live. Uh, what? And, and we go through, which one of these do you think your agents would benefit from the most? And he goes, oh, man, I love that one right there. Great. When would be a good time for us to schedule that for a meeting then? Notice I didn't ask for a presentation. You know, I just asked when. And uh, they schedule us and we come in. Now, sometimes they'll go, well, I can only give you a five-minute presentation. But when you when they see this kind of presentation, they're not worried about the five minutes. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do the notebook right and everything, oh, yeah, come in and uh, we'll, we'll give you five minutes to speak. And then I created what I call the perfect five-minute presentation. OK, and in that presentation, you take three minutes to teach them something and you mention your other presentations and then you give a minute or two on who you are, what you are, what makes you different and everything. And before I leave, I'm scheduling my next presentation. I have literally gone into an office and left with six presentations for that office every week for the next six weeks. OK, and by the end of that six weeks, that office, that office knows me and uh, is started to use us even. And so that's my perfect office entry. How's that work? That I could listen to you all day. That's perfect. So <laughs> if you're listening to this show, rewind and write down that whole process. Because you notice at step four, the fourth visit, we've talked about that on the show before, four touches. That's that's what we're looking for is four touches. And then that person starts to trust you. They become a referral. You own that office. And it's interesting if you listen to Mike Mike, a lot of the common complaints that I hear from home inspectors is I can't get past the admin. By the sounds of it, most of your conversation happened with the admin at the desk, right? Yeah, and, and can, I'm going to tell you a big secret. And I'm so glad you don't call her the gatekeeper. Thank you for that. That's impressive, okay? Most people want to call her the gatekeeper, right? We call her the greeter. OK, we're teaching our marketing people that that person's there to greet you, to mm -hmm. say hi to you, to help you, you know, and you're right. Like 60 percent of our 70 percent of our conversation is with the greeter when we come in and uh, we're making them our friend. We find out what kind of chocolate they like. Oh, you like Reese's Pieces? Not a problem. And bring a small little bag of Reese's Pieces in or something. And of course, you you might walk into one office and I had walk, one office that I walked into. And the lady literally got up. I, I'm like four steps in the door. She literally got up, came around the desk. She goes, stop right there. You cannot come in here. And I went, oh, okay. I, I said, did, did we do something wrong? What did my inspector say something? Or did we miss something? I mean, what did I do? You know, she goes, you're bringing chocolates into our office. And we have eight ladies in here on Weight Watchers. <laughs> and you're killing us, dude. You're killing us. <laughs> and, and I looked at her and I went, my wife is on Weight Watchers. I understand. How about if I brought fresh fruit in like apples and oranges? And, and she looked at me, she said, you do that for us? And I went, yeah, absolutely. And so I went to the grocery store, got some apples and oranges and bananas and grapes. And you'll notice I didn't mention those a while ago because don't do grapes. And if you do bananas, make a really green, okay? Ah, that's um, good. Because they, they attract flying insects, all right? Pro tip. But apples and oranges are the best. And it cost me less than chocolates. It cost me less than chocolates, right? <laughs> and they don't disappear as quick as chocolates do. But you know what? That lady never never questioned me again. And every time I stopped and brought in fresh fruit for that office. And uh, we had a great relationship. So you're absolutely correct. Build that relationship with that admin person, or as we like to call them, the greeter. And if you can do something nice for that person, man, they make your whole life. They make your whole life better.